Get this figure and more at the Big Bad Toy Store. Links in the description. <laughs> Hey, my name is Javi, and today we're taking a look at a round boy. Yes, you're also indeed a round boy, but we're not talking about you. Get out. The Ocular Max Omni is a third-party representation of the Transformers Generation 1 character named Cosmos. And according to his bio on TF Wiki, insert fourth joke in the picture caption here. The Cosmos is also within us. <laughs> and this little butterball transforms into an adorable little UFO. So before we get into it, I should mention that my particular copy of the figure did not arrive in a box. This guy was actually an early production sample sent to me directly from Ocular Max themselves, and I received it way before it was in stock. So to them, I apologize for the extreme delay, please don't sue me. The painting and the sculpting on this figure is pretty good. I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but that's pretty much how all Transformers Generation 1 designs work. They're blocky, exceedingly simple, but they've got that kind of charm that keeps getting suckers like me to keep buying merch. What can I say? I love Transformers. And on the topic of charm, my god, is this thing cute? I mean, it barely even looks like a vehicle. It's just a tiny, glorified... Hockey puck. But when we take a closer look at the figure, you can definitely see that it is indeed a vehicle. It's got some landing gear, thrusters on the back, and even a cockpit, which reveals a very nicely sculpted bumblebee. And there's even more of that cockpit when you look at the front of the figure. Or is this the back? Is this the front? I don't know anymore. You're gonna need something to pry this open, which kinda sucks. Yay! And god dig it, damn it's Blaster. And if you don't know who Blaster is, I barely even know him either. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. You poor excuse for a sound system. All talk, no shock. So not only does this guy look cute, he feels cute too. I don't even know what that means. What I'm saying is that he's nice to hold and he's got a really nice weight to him. And that's due to some die-cast metal pieces, which of course I found through my... And for the most part, this mode holds together really well. But there is this one tab that refuses to go in all the way. I have to assume this problem was fixed in the final release. And there's a problem that not even a final release can fix. I'm not a fan of these gaps. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but come on, it was almost a perfect circle. And as you can see here, there's virtually no kibble on this guy, which is amazing. So why don't we move on to his accessories? There are no accessories. At least not with this production sample. According to the instructions, you get two mini cannons. So I have to assume again that they're included in the final release. But you do get these two cannons, which you can easily... <laughs> not easy at all to get these things out. Ah, fuck. <sighs> that looks pretty cool and adorably non-threatening. These things are also made out of metal, which of course I found out. And there's really no point in talking about the possibility of a goddamn dumpling. So we could just move on to the size comparisons. Here's Figma Monica Academy, SH Mazraj Godzilla, Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and another transformable round boy, the Masterpiece Bumblebee. Wait, how does this guy fit into here? Just don't question it. And it's no surprise that this guy transforms, so we should just get into that. You simply push this button. The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. Here we have his robot mode, and as you can see, it's very faithful to the original G1 drawing. Just, uh, not as round. He is still short and stocky, but he's significantly slimmed down, which makes him look a bit cooler. And I gotta admit, the robot mode was pretty off-putting at first. I'm just so used to my Transformers figures vaguely resembling muscle men. But, after having this figure for about, what is it now, two months? Again, sorry for the delay, please don't sue me. I've gotten used to these proportions, so this robot mode holds together extremely well, but this little part at the arm did break on me. And this is no slide against the figure itself. It might just be due to my own incompetence. See, I might have pulled it back too hard and there you go. But a problem like that is easily fixable with super glue and and it's still functional. He also feels really nice to hold due to that die-cast metal, which, in this mode, is located on his feet. Kind of a common thing with Masterpiece-style Transformers. And a really cool detail that I noticed. So the design on his chest here is a big version of the cockpit of the vehicle mode. So by way of simple transformation engineering, this guy managed to pull off mass shifting. And at this point, I would have talked about accessories if it had any. But the thrusters of the vehicle mode do become these arm cannons. And one of the landing gears of the vehicle mode becomes... <laughs> So for such a short, stocky piece of shit, this guy is actually quite poor. Ball join at the head, can look up very far and look down very far. Rotation at the arm, arm moves out, double bend at the elbow, bicep swivel, wrist swivel, and all his fingers are on individual hinge joints. They're just kind of hard to get out there. Thumb is on a ball joint, and his index finger has a middle hinge joint. Forward movement at the shoulder, but it can't really move back that far. Ab crunch, and this little flap moves to accommodate that. Rotation at the leg, and that's on a beautiful ratchet. Oh, side skirt moves out, allows for a yeah. thigh swivel, landing gear can- 
<laughs> Double bend at the knee, anchor moves up, and you get a beautiful pivot. This guy has an incredible amount of joints, but due to the awkward nature of his proportions, the poses that you can get with him are kind of limited. The arms are especially awkward, but you can still manage to get some dynamic poses out of him. <laughs> nice comparison. Monica, Godzilla, Prime, Bobby. Overall, this thing is awesome. Yes, the blocky and simple nature of the design might not be for everyone, but if you're into that G1 stuff, which is totally not outdated, definitely get this figure. And for a third-party figure, it's actually a pretty good price out of the- Big bad toy store. So I gotta give a big thanks to all of you guys who suggested Patreon alternatives in the last video, but fortunately, Patreon themselves recently announced that they're not gonna go through with the changes that drove a bunch of people away. So, you know, if you were patrons before, maybe you can come back, maybe. But again, my videos are always free and available on YouTube. You don't even have to pay a single shekel if you don't want to, but it would be greatly appreciated. As for the next review, I felt a great disturbance in the cosmos, as if hundreds of non-Transformers fans and weeaboos were suddenly unsubscribe. What can I say? I love Transformers.